Welcome back. In this video, what we're actually going to be looking at is changing the message from you cross the finish line to you win, just like that. So previously, what we actually had was in our on trigger enter, we actually had you crossed the finish line. Okay, the way that you change that is exactly how I just showed you then, was you delete your text you win and we'll chuck a couple of exclamation marks in there as well so save that off just by pressing Control s or by going file save from here what you can do is let's go back and I've only got the one exclamation mark when I was trialing it before so let's hit play now and we should see you win with two exclamation marks just to make it stand out and there you go if you really wanted to you could even go through and change you win to purple monkey dishwasher it doesn't matter what you actually have written in there, um, it will still display it. So whatever you need to have it right in that debug window, you can. So you can now see Purple Monkey Dishwasher comes up. So unport play, and I'm just going to undo that as well, and resave. So the very next thing that we actually want to do is we actually want to go through and create a, a label for the gamer to see. So the person that's playing the game, we need to provide feedback. And the way we do that is through a simple function called on GUI. Now GUI stands for graphical user interface which is what we actually need to use. We need to provide the user with an interface that's graphical, something that they can see. So we're actually going to write down function on GUI, open bracket, close bracket and open and close my curlies like that as well. And it's always good to get into the habit of code formatting. I'm going to stress that many, many times and you'll get sick of hearing it. But it's a case where you really need to be able to read and write code that others will be able to read and write. So the very first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to go through and create something called a label. So GUI.label. And if you're ever curious about some of the things that we actually do, just select the text and press Control apostrophe. And what will happen is it will actually load up the Unity scripting reference. And it will actually just do a search for us and we can see GUI.label. And it says, make a text or texture label on a screen. So text is just something that's written in terms of words. A texture is like a picture or an image. So from here, we can actually create something called Hello World. We're not actually gonna create Hello World. Well, actually let's create Hello World. So you can actually see this function on GUI and it says GUI.label. 10, 10, that. So let's select this one here. Copy. And see how it's in an on GUI function? It means it has to be in an on GUI function, which we've already written. I'm going to select what I've written and press Control V and save that one off. So already, I'll actually see this Hello World label. So let's go back to Unity. Make sure we haven't gotten any errors and hit Clear in our console window. And let's hit Play. And you'll see up in the top left, this hello world. Now it's not very easily to see and we can fix it up later, but it's showing even before we've won. Maybe that's because it's saying hello world. I don't think it is, but let's just check anyway. So let's just cross our finish line. Just make sure something, nothing else happens. No, it's still displaying hello world. So what we actually need to do is let's change that hello world to you win. So it provides a feedback to the player to say, hey, you won the race, you can stop now. You can still see that you win there though, before we cross the finish line. That's not quite right, how can we fix that? So the way when we code is we need to do small bit by small bit, find a problem, fix the problem. And then once we've fixed all the problems, choose what else we're gonna add to our game. So it's showing us all the time and we only want it to cross show after we've crossed the finish line. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create something called a variable. And remember, a variable is something that holds information. So the very first thing I'm going to do is at the very top of our GUI label, I'm actually going to write if. And this is just an if and then situation. So if the race is finished, we're going to do whatever is in the two curly brackets. So what you'll see is, if the race is finished, you'll see this open bracket and this closing curly bracket, everything inside will happen. If the race isn't finished, 
then it's just going to go, no, it's not finished. Let's skip over this part. So let's save that and let's go back to Uni and see what happens. You'll actually see that it says unknown identifier finished. And the reason what an unknown identifier is, is it's a word that you've used that Unity doesn't understand. So the main thing that you've got to realize is computers are extremely dumb and we've got to tell them what to do. So I'm going to quickly jump back to Unity. And the reason for it is we've used this word finished. Unity doesn't know what it is. So I have to define it as a variable. So at the very top on line one, I'm going to write var. Now var stands for variable. The very next thing I need to do in JavaScript is to actually write down my word, which is finished. And I'm actually going to define that with a colon, so the double dot, as something called a Boolean. And finish with a semicolon. Now, a Boolean is just a type of thing that is either true or false. It's not a number. It's not a word. It's either true or false, a zero or one. So it's saying that var is finished is a Boolean doesn't mean it's equal to that, but we actually can then say equals false, because until you cross that finish line, it's going to be false. So let's just go back to Unity after we've saved it and hit play and see what happens, because that's gotten rid of our error. And you'll see that you win doesn't appear. So let's go through our finish line. Oh, hang on. It still doesn't appear here, but it does appear down in our console window. Why isn't it appearing for the player? Well, we can fix that by actually going through is we're actually setting finished to false and we're checking to see if finished is true. So this part here means if finished is true. So where can we actually tell it that finished is true? Well, when it crosses that trigger we created in the earlier video, we can actually go through and say, finished is equal to true. So whenever this message gets displayed, we change what finished is to true. And from there, we can go through and say, okay, if it finished is true, GUI.label and it will display that. So let's go back to Unity, let's hit play. And you'll see that there's still no you win, but if I drive through that trigger now, it's all of a sudden started to display because finished is true. Okay, now the very next thing is, is I don't like it up in that, that top left corner when we actually play it. So I'm just gonna quickly play test again. And this you win. It doesn't really give that much feedback to the player. So I'm actually gonna whack it dead center in the screen. To do that, I actually need to play with these values here. And what do these values mean? So now we've actually copied a piece of code from our scripting reference, and we've gone through and typed in new win. So we've changed what the word said from hello world. We now wanna change these values. So what these values mean is this is the same as saying, I might just copy that and rewrite another line. This is how far across the screen it is. It's X direction. The next part is going to be its Y direction, how far up and down the screen it is going to be. And remembering the top left of the screen is considered zero, zero. The very next one is actually going to be our width. And our last one is going to be considered our height. Now, if I was to actually write that piece of code, the computer wouldn't understand what X is, it wouldn't understand what Y is, it wouldn't understand width or height, just like it didn't understand the word finished. So to save that, I'm actually going to go through and comment out my code. So right button click and go down to toggle line comment, or you could put two forward slashes in. Just like I did earlier, the two forward slashes means it's not going to actually read that code. That's purely for us to help us understand our code better. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and change this X value. So if I want it to be in the center of the screen, I actually have to do a little bit of clever maths. So every single computer screen is a different width or height unless they're all the same. 
And this happens all around the world with everybody's different computer from laptop screens to desktop screens, to tablet screens. So what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to use something called screen.width. So screen.width is going to be the full width of the screen. It finds out how many pixels there are. So if there's a thousand pixels, which wouldn't actually happen, but if there's a thousand, it means the dead center of the screen is going to be 500. To get a thousand to 500, we're actually going to divide by two or divide our screen in half. So it goes, okay, if there's 1,024 pixels in the screen, then there's only 512 to the dead center. Now, this one is a bit of a hard complex to get, if, or a hard uh, idea to get. If you're having trouble with this, please ask for help. So the next part is screen.height. And what the screen.height does is the exact same thing, but it goes up and down instead. So I'm going to find the halfway of the screen.height. The next one is how wide the label is and how wide that is going to appear and how tall that's going to appear. I'm actually going to leave those two for the moment. So save that off, go back to Unity, and let's hit play test. So again, you won't see any message anywhere. So let's just drive through this here and you'll see this U win is no longer up in the top left as it was before, but it's now in the dead center. So the very next thing that we want to do is we also want to create a restart button. So to create a restart button, we actually need it to appear once it says you win. So let's do that now. Well, not now. Let's join to it in the next video because I've run a long time. So in the next video, we're actually going to look at placing down a restart button to restart our race.